Hello everyone, I hope all of you are doing great. Well, my name is Ahmed Mumtaz and I welcome all of you to this exciting orientation session for the September 2023 exam. Okay, first of all, heartiest congratulations and, you know, two thumbs up to you because you are somewhere around the corner. You are at the brink of the ACCA qualification. This is AAA. This is the highest level of ACCA for sure. Now, before I move on or before we proceed, I would like you to have some kind of confirmation. Am I absolutely crystal clear? You can use the chat box if you want to. Can I have some yes? Can I have some hello? Good evening. Good morning. Uh, anything but good night. Okay. Thank you very much, Jacob and Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fatma. Hello, sir. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you very much. So, okay. So, today is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday the 16th, not the 13th. And we have AAA exam on 4th September 2023. Now, there is one goal. That's it. There is one agenda. That's it. There is no second thought whatsoever. And that is, I don't want us to wait for the result. I just want to make sure we don't wait for the June 2023 result. And we don't wait for the September 2023 result. So the agenda is one and only one. I want you to inspire. I want you to motivate yourself. I want you to have a self-belief that we can ace the AAA exam on Monday, 4th September 2023. Now, if that has to happen, we have to forget about one thing and we have to make sure of, you know, few things. First of all, we have to forget about the June 2023 exam. So if you attempted June 2023 exam, it went great for you. Well, good for you. If it did not, you know, go on as you expected, forget about it. And if you did not attempt the June 2023 exam, well, let's move on and let's be optimistic, as I always say. Now, what about September 2023 exam? There will be, you know, broadly speaking, two types of students. Category number one, those who are going to wait for the result. Once they will attempt the paper on 4th September, now then on, they will wait for the result. They will hope, they will pray, they will have their fingers crossed. Well, you have to pray, you should pray, you should have a self-belief. But at the same time, you can be someone who's going to ace the exam, who's going to be a winner. You can be of a category from a category where you are not going to just attempt the paper. Rather, you can secure the exam. Well, can you? Yes, you can. And I want to make sure that both of us should have a winning day on Monday, 4th September 2023. And it is possible. Okay, let's proceed. Today is Friday and we have, got, we have got good enough days before the final exam. Everything is possible within these days. We can cover all the technical articles. We can cover the study text. We can, you know, explore the marking scheme. We can explore loads and loads of past papers. Still, we will have 15, 14 days before we go on to attempt the final mock exam. And you will receive a feedback, let's say after three days or four days, still you will have eight to nine days to bounce back. So it's a, it's an ideal situation. There is one thing which is missing, you know, a plan, proper direction and your hard work. Well, on, uh, in front of your screen, there are a couple of very important numbers. The first number, which ends with 065. That is my personal number and I am available on WhatsApp. So if you have got any concerns or queries or if you want to join the AAA global group, which is for free for everyone, you can contact me and I will share the link. Or if you have got any other query whatsoever, you are more than welcome. The second number belongs to the WIFI's 
technical support team and the admission department they are there to facilitate if somebody wants to enroll well if you haven't enrolled you can contact them and they will share the details so that's the first thing first let's move on okay a very brief introduction about me if you are not that much familiar with me well uh, my name is Ahmed and I am currently teaching in two organizations or two ALPs the first ALP is a platinum ALP which is situated in Islamabad where we uh, provide physical classes it's a platinum ALP and the second ALP the more important one as of now is a gold online ALP approved by ACCA itself and I teach double A and triple A at WIFI so yes I have been honored to be part of the ACCA's practice to pass webinars for both double A and triple A okay let's move on let's focus on triple A now this orientation session will guide you and it will give you proper direction about few things number one I would like to teach and I would like to highlight what is the course content is it manageable to cover the course content in 60 days why I'm saying 60 days Be because after 60 to 64 days or let's call it 65 days we are going to have a final mock exam and after the final mock exam we still have got we will have at least 10 days before the final exam so final mock exam and final exam so we have got 60 65 days so you need to know what is the course content you need to know what is the exam format you need to know what is my plan and most importantly I will tell you what is the recipe to fail the paper and at the same time the countermeasures or what things you can do in order to, in order to ensure that 4th September is going to be a winning day for both of us so let's start with the course content let's keep it simple what about course content well first of all we have got seven areas in total the first area which is about the regulatory environment the most important topic within the regulatory environment is money laundering well in my part of the world money laundering is world famous we have created a name for ourselves when it comes to money laundering so yes money laundering is a hot topic considering the current situation the second topic is about professional and ethical considerations now many students would believe incorrectly that they are good at this topic by default or from their double A but that's not the case because in double A you studied ethical issues but in triple A you need to understand professional and ethical considerations and the depth is very deep so this is one topic which all over the world students tend to you know they tend to underestimate the, the importance of the syllabus area B because they incorrectly believe they know everything about it from their double A but it's not the case syllabus area C syllabus area C is the hot cake for the last six months and it is going to be a hot cake for at least another six months now why I'm saying that because approximately a year ago there was a major change in this topic which is called quality management in fact it used to be quality control but now you are not supposed to control the mistakes in fact you have to actively manage it in order to make sure you don't end up committing a problem you don't committing you don't end up committing a compromise on quality so it's about quality management now it's a it's a very very important topic it's highly examinable nowadays we had this topic you know in in a particular session in June 2023 this topic was also tested in December 2022 it is going to be a hot cake for at least couple of more attempts then comes along with quality management there is practice management practice management are those issues which are faced by the audit firm those issues which need to be managed by the audit firm for example how they have to win a new client what about tendering what about advertising 
so those issues which are not a point of concern for an individual rather it's a point of concern for the you know at the firm level those are practice management related issues so that's the topic number 3 now the syllabus area d which is the backbone of the entire course because the question number 1 which has got total 50 marks will always be set at the planning stage yes you studied some something like that in your double a the audit risk the risk of material misstatement the detection risk but along with those risk there is a new risk within the triple a and it's called business risk business risk was not examinable in double a but it is highly examinable when it comes to triple a majority student did not have business risk in their june 2023 attempt so i am dead sure that business risk will be there when it comes to your september 2023 exam i'm super dead sure well business risk is not the risk faced by the auditor rather business risk is the risk faced by the company by the business itself so if the business will not be able to achieve their desired strategies goals and objectives most likely they will manipulate the financial statements and as a result of the business risk the financial statements would become vulnerable and the financial statements would be materially well possibly they will be materially misstated which creates audit risk so that's the beauty and that's the relationship between business risk and the audit risk that is going to be tested in question number 1 topic number f uh, sorry topic number e i personally believe that along with topic number d topic number e is the most well prepared topic all over the globe well prepared topic three stars okay now why i'm saying that topic number e is the most well prepared topic all over the globe because according to your triple a examiner in the section b of your exam one of the question will always belongs to syllabus area e so anyone out there who has attempted the paper in june 2023 can confirm march 2023 student can confirm you or for that matter you will realize it in the september 2023 23 exam you can check out the past paper so one thing is for sure that we will have one full question on this topic as a result of that once a student realizes that the question number one will focus on the planning and risk assessment yes other topics will be tested in the question number one but main or the greater chunk will be from the syllabus area d and once the student realizes that the syllabus area e will be tested within the section b one full question automatically the students will realize and the students will you know assume that if they are great or good in the syllabus area d and e nobody can stop them from you know clearing this paper well i slightly disagree with that because assuming you will score approximately 22 out of 25 from syllabus area d and assuming if you are going to score 18 out of uh 25 in from the syllabus area e still you need to attempt the rest of the paper and still you need to clear the exam the greater majority of the triple a students will not attempt the full paper they will attempt you know 70 or 80% of their exam and they will fail somewhere around you know let's add few marks somewhere from 45 to 50 so do we need to make sure that syllabus area d e d and e is well prepared absolutely sure shot yes i agree on that but can we compromise on other topics no you never know what if you get 25 mark question from quality management so we cannot underestimate the importance of other topics with but having said that yes i do acknowledge and i do realize that syllabus area d and e are having the greatest you know weightage in the final exam okay let's continue we are done with five contents the sixth content the most 
अंडर प्रिपेयर टॉपिक इन द एंटायर ए सी सी ए यू नो इन द एंटायर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ द ए सी सी ए ऑफ द ट्रिपल ए स्टूडेंट्स वाई इज दैट वेल द ऑडिट फर्म्स और द फर्म ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स नॉट ओनली प्रोवाइड द ऑडिट सर्विस दे डू प्रोवाइड अदर सर्विसेज एज वेल फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ कंपनी ए वॉन्ट्स टू एक्वायर कंपनी बी If company A wants to acquire company B, what do you think? What what do you think that company A's management would need some kind of you know advice from someone that should we buy company B or not? At what price we need to buy company B? At what time we need to buy company B? Is there anyone who can help the company A in realizing what are the you know what are the values of the assets what are the potential assets what are the potential benefits of this acquisition what are the potential liabilities so company a would need some advice and ideally speaking that advice has to be provided by the company a's auditor this type of assignment is called due diligence for example few years ago in pakistan one of the telecom company mobile inc acquired another telecom company varit now before that acquisition mobilink should have or mobilink did took the advice from their existing auditor that assignment is called due diligence there are six such assignments in the triple a those assignments those assignments have got nothing to do with your double a this is all brand new exclusively available in triple a now considering the fact we are heading towards the end of the course content majority of the students would start their pre pre preparation from maybe b then they will prepare e then they will realize there are six topics in it so they will say okay let's ignore this one let's prepare quality okay uh, what about f okay let's ignore f let's prepare ethics as a result of that greater majority of the students are never prepared or highly under prepared for the other assignments there are six other assignments i believe we need to have six different lectures on six other assignments plus for each and every other assignment we need to solve at least couple of past paper questions and yes we do that and we will do that and if we are going to prepare other assignments if you are not going to ignore other assignments if you are going to realize that there could be a complete 25 mark question on other assignment which could decide the fate which could decide the result for the triple exam i think we will make it so this syllabus area f is the most under prepared topic of the triple a all over the globe last but surely not the least the syllabus area f is about the current issues and developments and considering the fact you are uh, right now attending the orientation session of triple a i think you are already aware how important and critical it is to read the technical articles when it comes to professional papers in fact technical articles are also important for the skill papers but at the professional level you cannot even imagine to attempt the triple a or any other professional exam without reading each and every technical article now if you are going to read the technical article within the accaglobal.com within the official resources which are available for triple a there is a sub category the technical articles for current issues and developments so we just have to keep an eye on those two three technical articles and that resolves the syllabus area g so we have got seven course content we are not going to under prepare any topic we are going to realize that everything is equally important yes we are going to go extra mile when it comes to syllabus area d and e but i believe we need to go an extra mile on the other assignments as well and we need to go an extra mile on quality management as well because it's a hot cake nowadays any question as of now considering we are done with the course content considering we have realized what triple a is before we move on you can use the chat box are we good
Can I move on? Okay, that's great. No questions. Sorry. Okay, so everyone seems to be clear with the course content. Well, the takeaway, takeaway or the learning outcome of the last five to seven minutes is don't just rely on two topics. We need to make sure we are well prepared for each and every topic. That's it. That's the key. At AAA, within ACCA, I don't think so that a student deserves to ace the exam. A student deserves to ace the exam by making compromises on two syllabus areas or one syllabus area out of the five, six, seven are available. Imagine we have got 100 areas of the course content. Okay, fine, I agree. If there are 100 course contents, okay, even 20, you might have to make compromise on two or three. There are seven areas. We have to make sure we are prepared for each and every possible exam requirement. Within, by the way, within quality management, within professional and ethical issues, uh, in fact, within the syllabus area D, more or less there is one exam requirement. Yes, within the syllabus area E and F, there are you know different types of exam requirements. Okay, sir, could you just quickly summarize syllabus area C? I joined a late. Okay, Aisha. The regulatory environment is about is about the laws and regulations that are applicable when it comes to an external audit. More importantly, the regulatory environment has got a topic about money laundering, which is a very important topic. You are already familiar with the professional and ethical considerations from your double A, Aisha. Uh, but the trap is, the trap is a student, not you, a student like me would say, yeah, I know ethics, self-interest, familiarity, my brother, my cousin, long association. Yeah, I know ethics, integrity, confidentiality. I know ethics. But the trap is there is a, a, the, the difference between the double A and triple A when it comes to ethical issues is very huge. It's a, it's a massive gap. Secondly, we did not study anything such as professional issues in double A. So this topic has to be prepared. What about syllabus area C? Quality management has been the hottest cake in AAA for the last six months and it is going to be a hot cake for another six months. Why I'm so sure about it? Okay. A, less than a year ago, there was a massive change in this topic. Secondly, now the, the Audit and Assurance Board, Audit and Insurance Board, they believe that the quality has to be managed actively rather than controlled. So it's about quality management now. In December 2022, quality management was tested for 25 marks. In uh, March 2022, quality management was not tested. Now in June 2023, again, March 2023, quality management was not tested. Again in June 2023, quality management was tested. So yeah, quality management is an important topic. So considering we are done with the course content and considering, uh, yeah, let's move on. Okay, the exam format. We all know the exam format, I believe. So there is question number one, having 50 marks in total. And the breakdown of the 50 mark is 40 technical marks. 10 professional marks. 40 technical marks, 10 professional marks. Question number, section B, question 2 and question 3. Question 2 and question 3 has got the same chemistry, total 25 marks each. Out of those 25, 20 technical marks, 5 professional skill marks. 5 professional skill marks. So how many total professional skills marks do we have? 20. How many professional skill marks we need to score at least? Well, at least we need to score 15 out of 20. Is it impossible? Is it mission impossible? No. 15 out of 20 can be achieved by an above average student. I'm not saying by the brilliant students. 
so 15 out of 20 is on the cards but there is a condition from the word go when you are going to attempt the first ever question on the practice platform and according to my planner you will be solving the first ever question triple a question on the practice platform i think in approximately five to six days four to five days surely before the upcoming weekend if that is the case in fact we have got live class next week so before the live class we need to make sure we are familiar with the practice platform so from the day one you got to make sure once you are attempting any question whether it's about ethical issues whether it's about the quality management related question you have to make sure you follow all the SOPs which I will guide regarding the professional skill marks it is not possible to score 10 out of 20 or more than 10 out of 20 by ignoring the professional skill marks throughout the session and then one fine week somewhere at the end of August you will say okay hello Aisha uh, Maria Milias here can you update me about the professional skill marks yeah I was just wondering can you help me out okay Aisha will help you Mariam but that will not you know you will not be able to cross the line because professional skill mark is not a conceptual topic it's not about that okay I will invest Friday and Saturday and then I will practice on Monday Tuesday and rock on no professional skills are more of a habit it's the second nature which develops within ourselves slowly but surely I will have a separate class on professional skills I will keep on emphasizing and you know making you realize how to score professional mark but just to give you a little flavor if I am your engagement partner and if I have asked you to you know update me about the business risk about the you know certain quality management issue and certain risk of material misstatement and tell me certain proce procedures on the government grant are you going to tell me the you know the answers directly or are you going to say you know hello sir I hope you find this email in great spirits uh, well my I have prepared the briefing notes in accordance with, with with your instructions and the briefing the first part of the briefing note is about the business risk and so you have to create a professional you know professional marks could be scored by you know creating certain habits in order to score professional marks you always have to come up with the introductory paragraph you have to come up with the conclusion paragraph you have to have you have to make sure you answer each and every requirement in the chronological order so if I ask you about A, B, C and D you should not respond in the order of A, C, D, B no you, sh you, are, you, are, you are having a discussion with your engagement partner for heaven's sake so you have to make sure if I ask about A followed by H followed by M and lastly Z you should come up with the same order you should make sure in order to facilitate the reading by your engagement partner you should come up with the heading business risk and if you are going to attempt four business risk you need to come up with four different headings not a very lengthy heading a brief but a very professional heading such things are not complicated but they can only be achieved. You can score more than 15. Trust me on that. 15 out of 20 is very much on the cards. It's very much achievable. Provided we have to absorb the professional skills from the first week. We have to replicate the professional skills from the first week. We cannot delay this or we cannot ignore it till the last week. That's the moral of the story. Now what about technical marks 40, 20 and 20? Just to clarify, when you are going to open up your final exam on Monday, 4th September 2023, all the exam requirements and the marks available against them will add up to 80. So those 10 plus 5 plus 5 marks will not be reflected anywhere. You are told that these 10 marks are incorporated within this question so you will attempt 40 mark paper but you will but simultaneously you will be attempting that 10 mark paper as well and you will be judged or you will be you know marked out of 50 is this clear
the exam format and the breakdown of the professional skill marks and the technical marks is it clear can i move on can i have a yes please oh thank you very much <clears throat> yeah thank you oh so <clears throat> boys and girls time to fasten your seat belts because now i am going to express few bad news but the great part of this session is i will tell you why this pass rate is so pathetic why pass rate is so low and at the same time i will tell you how we can make sure and we will make sure that we end up being on the successful side okay before i move on is there anyone abdul rafe joseph anyone who could tell me what is the average global pass rate for fr tax fm is there anyone who could tell me about this one number for all three one number for all three uh, on an average what is the consistent pass rate globally yeah abdul rafe thank you very much i'm loving it yes 48 to 50 mostly yeah don thank you it's mostly touching 50 you know what sometimes fm is more than 50 as well 51 sometimes tax is more than 50 51 even F fr okay thank you hold now hold this thought hold this thought let's move to the professional level because it's been ages you had your go at the skill level okay what about sbr and what about sbl the most expensive paper anyone what about sbr and sbl what's the average pass rate for those two exams for the last 2 3 4 5 attempts or let's call it let's call it let for the last two years no gotham i disagree with that yes don 50 yes i say 47 to 49 no mariam not 45 never no 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 sbl had back to back 51 and then it dropped to 50 and i think it again jumped up to 50 yes if i have to take an average if i have to move on with the discussion and if i have to take one number i will okay let's be i will take 50% in order to be you know conservative or prudent okay i might say 49 but it's not 45 it's not 44 now is there anyone who has got an idea what's the average pass rate of triple a for the last 10 attempts last 2.5 years last 3 years last 4 years last 3 attempts any number thank you very much it's somewhere between 30 to 34 so if i have to take an average yeah 32 yes sana thank 32 34 yeah absolutely now let's check it out march 21 when we were having pandemic 32 32 34 34 34 march 2022 33 31 june 2022 31 it jumped up to 34 back to 32 34 was march 2023 so if i have to take one number as an average yes 32 aisha you have to hold your horses and trust the process i know i know this is going this is scary but you know what what options do we have are we going to shut down the laptop and are we going to say okay this the pass rate of triple a is so pathetic i'm done no there are students who are make who are clearing the paper in first attempt we just want to know and we we just have to make sure we just follow their footsteps we just have to make sure we follow the marking scheme the examiner's guidance the tutor's instructions we have to be on our toes last but surely not the least we have to make sure of one thing this quarter has to be the best quarter of our entire accl journey so we we always say been there done that right no it's not the case for triple a you can't say been there done that 
Swati, the professional marks are going to be a cherry on the cake. They are going to help you in a big way. But let's let's ignore professional marks for now. Now, there is a case which I'm trying to build here. SBL and SBR, which are mostly which are mostly the last papers which the norm students would have attempted before joining the AAA, right? Majority of you would have attempted SBR fairly recently. Majority of the students would have attempted SBL fairly recently. Greater majority of the AAA students would either be attending SBR and AAA parallel or simultaneously or most likely, most likely their last paper was SBR. Now you have to realize it's a massive, massive, massive jump from 30, from 50% to 32%. What's the difference? 18% okay even APM and ATX and AFM are somewhere around 40 is it so Sana if, I, if we have to take one number for ATX APM and AFM I think it's it's going to be 39 or 40 38 okay make it 38 anyone who's, who's going to second me So the difference, let's not compare AAA with APM or ATX. Let's compare it with SBR and SBL. The difference is huge, 18%. But at the same time, the good news is, the great news is, in the next 15 to 20 minutes, next 10 minutes, I will tell you wh why the AAA has got such a high failure rate. Those who have studied double A from me, you must be familiar. I always highlight one thing. Why students fail in double A? At the same time or with the same philosophy, I always endorse one thing. Why students fail in triple A? As, a, as an ACCA student, trust me, I just want to know two things. What are the top five most common reasons behind the FR exams failure? or FM exams failure or PM exams failure and what are the countermeasures? That's it. If somebody is going to tell me five most obvious and common reasons behind the AAA failure, I will make sure I don't, you know, I don't commit those five mistakes and I will clear the paper. That's it. End of the story. So guys, yes, it's a scary story, but we need to cross the line. You have to realize among all the optional papers in the ACCA, AAA is the most important one. You should not avoid AAA. AAA is the most attempted paper all over the globe. There is a reason behind it. There are reasons. Any, anywhere in the world, any chartered accountancy professional body, there is one thing about the chartered accountant, reporting and auditing. There is one backbone reporting and auditing. You cannot separate the two. ACCA has made sure SBR is your mandatory exam. Ideally speaking, they should make sure AAA is your, is your uh, mandatory exam as well. Anything apart from reporting and auditing could be considered as a valuable byproduct. Very important byproduct, but not the backbone of the chartered accountant's life. A chartered accountant has to make sure he knows how to make compliance when preparing the financial statements and at the same time a chartered accountant should know how to ensure that the financial statements are reflecting a true and fair view in accordance with the accounting standards so it means reporting and auditing period so the pass rate is pathetic but triple a is very important triple a is very important for your future career even if you don't wish to be part of your part of the audit firm, still you will face the music when the auditor will, you know, you know, jump into your organization. So AAA is really, really important. It gives you wings in the audit firm. It gives you an extra edge. And an ideal approach when it comes to your practical life or your audit firm is invest the first year in the audit department. And if it is possible for you, Okay, in the year two, move on to the tax department, move on to the consultancy department, move on to any, you know, maybe ERP or IT department. But the first year needs to be within the audit department so, so that you could learn 
how to ensure the final accounts, how to, you know, sometimes prepare the final accounts and how to make sure how, you know, you need to go through. Tax comes later. First of all, we need to close the books. Then comes the tax, right? So anyone out there who has got an opportunity somewhere around the corner to, you know, jump into a reputable audit firm, well, make sure you do enjoy at least a year or so of learning the auditing. Okay, now I think it's time. Well, we I've already explored. What about section A? The section A will always be a case study worth 50 marks. It is always going to be a planning stage question. Business risk would be tested. Audit risk would be tested. Or it could be no audit risk, rather specifically risk of material misstatement. If you know what is risk of material misstatement, good for you. Otherwise, audit risk has got two components, risk of material misstatement and detection risk. So the exam if the examiner says audit risk, it means both of these are, are examinable. But audit examiner could specifically mention risk of material misstatement. It means we cannot attempt detection risk. But other areas of the syllabus would be tested within the section A, such as ethical and professional issues, such as quality management. What about section B? Well, within the section B, there are two questions. And one of the question will focus exclusively on the syllabus area E. That's why it's the most important or highly prepared topic all around the globe. The other question is a tricky question. You know what? I shall come back to your comment. Give me a few minutes. Uh, one of the most, uh, well, the typical AAA answer script would be question number one, above average. Question number two and three, the question on the syllabus area E, above average. So, 75 mark paper, above average. Now, if the student could attempt the third question above average, he or she will ace the paper. But the sad part is, majority student will not attempt the question, let's call it question three of the section B. They will not attempt it at all. Now, you tell me, if the 75 mark paper is above average, okay, almost average. What do you think? Are you dead sure without attempting question 3, you will clear the paper? Most likely, you will fail somewhere around, unfortunately, 45 to 50. So, there is a huge number of students, great number of students who are going to attempt the paper for 80 marks, 75 marks and they will fail at 48, which is more than 50%, mind you. 48 out of 80 or 48 out of 75 is a great number. It's more than 50%. But what about question 3? Question number 3 could be tested from the syllabus area B and F. I told you the importance of BF. Don't ignore B and F. B is about ethical and professional issues and F is about F is about the other assignments, the six other assignments. Okay, are we clear? Can I move on to this part of the session, which is the last part? And trust me, this is the most important part. You have to focus. If you could understand my point of view for the next 10 minutes, you are ready to rumble. You are ready to go and you will uh, enjoy the session and you will have a winning day on 4th September. So can I have confirmation? Can I move on now? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, guys, you have to understand what I'm trying to tell you here. I will be telling a couple of things. Obviously, A, why students fail. But at the same time, I would like to tell you what's the remedy, what's the solution. So, as a student, you need to understand why students are failing and what I need to do what I need to do for the next 60 days. It's not about 90 days. How many days we have in the final exam? Before the final exam. How many days do we have before the final exam? Full August. Full July. That means 61, 62 days. 62 days. And today is 16th. So let's add another 15 days. 
so we have got 77 days and the exam is on 4th so let's add another 3 days we have got 80 days right we have got 80 days if you are going to follow my instructions for not the 80 days for the first 60 days first 60 days it means you will attempt the final mock exam you will you know perform reasonably well in the final mock exam and that will lead to the glory after 80 days so let's start the show why students fail in AAA. reason number one as Aisha has already highlighted for everyone poor time management the greater majority student will let you know that they couldn't finish off the paper why why you didn't attempt the full paper why 82 why 84 why not 100 well uh, you know time was finished so if poor typing speed is your thing you cannot overcome that particular issue within the last week you will not be able to bounce back in the last 10 days of august you will attempt the final mock exam for me somewhere around on 23rd 24th august so once you will receive the feedback on 25th or 26th august you will have 7-8 days before the final exam but you will not be able to improvise or radically improve your typing speed in the last one week. What's the problem? Poor typing speed. What's the solution? Well the solution is let's focus on the practice platform. Let's make sure that we will solve each and every question Let's focus, let's make sure that we will solve each and every question on the ACCS practice platform. No pen and paper, no Microsoft Word, one thing only and that is ACCS practice platform. So you will type each and every question which you are going to attend with me. Each and every question which we are going to explore during the live class. Once, we, once you have understood a question, you are not supposed to read the question and read the solution. You need to read the question and solution for your clarity. Good for you. But you are never prepared for a question until or unless you have produced the same using the practice platform. If you are someone who is badly struggling with the typing speed, well, there is another added advice for you. For the next 30 days, invest one hour daily on typing.com if you are going to do that your typing speed will radically improve significantly improve and you will never face this issue which is called oh well time was finished never ever typing.com sign up for free rather than investing three hours per day on instagram let's invest two hours per day on instagram and let's invest one hour on typing.com how, how is that so that's the first problem, typing speed. What's the solution? There are a couple of solutions. Solution number one, typing.com. And the solution number two is practice platform. Why students fail this particular paper? Well, before attempting any AAA question before reading any AAA question, before reading any AAA solution, before typing any AAA question, you must read the marking scheme. I highlight or emphasize the marking scheme so much. Now, if you're wondering, what's that? In AA, marking scheme was very simple. Half mark for the identification for the identification of deficiency. Half mark for the identification of ethical issue. Half mark for another, for the added explanation. One mark for the tests of control. One mark for the substantive procedure. In AAA, the marking scheme is very judgmental. There is a huge possibility for an eight mark part. Aisha, you might attempt an answer which is for fourteen to sixteen mark. Why? Because once you read the solution which is available at the ACCS website, you realize that this is too much. And once you will try to replicate the ideal answers, there is a huge possibility you will forget about the marking scheme and you will overcook it. So always read the marking scheme. Always 
talk to yourself that that much points I need, that much is enough to score full marks in order to attempt the full paper. So lack of awareness for the marking scheme is a is another important reason behind the failure. It's very technical. You will realize this particular point with the passage of time, approximately in the next ten to fifteen days. Reason number th number three why students fail this particular paper. As some of you were mentioning that this looks scary, right? Another reason behind the failure is students will read the ideal answers. Well, what do I mean by ideal answers? The answers which are available at the ACCA's website, the past paper answers. Well, if you are going to read the ideal answers, the past paper answers, you should read them. But you have to realize those are ideal answers and you are not supposed to reproduce each and every bit of it. So for example, for a 22 mark question on audit risk, if you are going to understand and add up the past paper answer, the past paper answer would end up somewhere around 42, minimum 38. I've done that before. I've experienced it before. So the question was for 18 mark and the solution was for 38 mark. 18 to the 36, not the 36, 38. So the marks available, maximum marks which could be scored 18. But within the answer at the back of your exam kit or at the ACCA's website, the answer suggested by the examiner adds up to 38. What does that mean? Is there anyone who has understood what does that mean? Examiner is asking, a question for 18 mark, but the suggested answers would add up to 36, 38, 40. What does that mean? All that extra points are there to facilitate your knowledge. Yes, Bilal, absolutely. All those extra points are ideal answers. ACCA or your examiner is not advising you to attempt every bit of it. They are saying A is correct, B is correct, C is also correct, D is correct, E correct, F correct, G, H, all are correct. You need to come up with any three. The question is why ACCA is recommending A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H when, when, when I'm only supposed to give three? Just to make sure you understand that these are all possible correct answers. Yes, the examiner would extract all possible answers in front of you. Now what's the trap? The trap is get demoralized and demotivated. You, you need to realize that those are ideal answers and nobody is asking you to reproduce every bit of it. We need to understand every bit of it. We need to make notes for every bit of it. But when it comes to a final mock exam, when it comes to final exam, we need to understand that we should not be attempting, for example, for example, let's, let me give you a very simple example. Examiner is going to ask you audit procedures on government grant for five marks. The maximum marks available are five. So in order to score five out of five, we need to come up with five procedures. Within the solution, there are 13 procedures. So all those 13 are correct. As a student, you need to understand all those 13. But if you are attempting a final mock exam or the final exam for that matter, any five. Any five. Yes, a very good point has been made in the chat box. You have ended up sacrificing your time for another question. Absolutely gold. Absolutely spot on. So if you are going to give 150% in question number one, you will end up giving 70% in question number two and you will not be attempting the question number three. I think that sums up the story. So the learning outcome is learn from the ideal answers, but don't get panicked. Don't be overwhelmed with the quantity of the ideal answers. Learn, extract, reproduce your own version. That's the key. Focus on this one. We will look into the ideal answers, but we need to extract an attainable answer out of the ideal answer. Attainable answer out of the ideal answer. Attainable, which is achievable, not the ideal one. We cannot and we should not reproduce all that. Reason number four, 
why triple a has got such a high failure rate many triple a students the greater majority of the triple a students are a working class so if you are working unfortunately sadly you will compromise on your studies tonight i don't want that to happen but that's the story that's the you know story all over the globe you will compromise your studies on the upcoming weekend well the weekend is here you will compromise your studies on the upcoming week the next to next weekend yeah you will do that right i know that as a result of your work related commitments as a result of your family commitments as a result of your you know social commitments at the end of the day what's what's going to be the outcome you will not prepare 100% syllabus so okay if you have to make a compromise on a syllabus area where are you going to commit the compromise i know that you are going to compromise on your bf why on b you will compromise on your b because you have wrongly assumed that you are already prepared for the syllabus area b ethical and professional issues and why are you going to compromise on f because you are running out of time the employer just gave you a, a you know the exam leaves for four days so instead of preparing six different topics which are available within the syllabus f you decided to prepare syllabus area d and e so greater majority of the failure students have revealed honestly speaking to me that they did not touched syllabus area f and they were not that great in syllabus area b so if you are going to ignore b f the chances are very dark we should not do that we are not going to do that reason number 5 behind the failure triple a exam those 3 hours 15 minutes it's a it's a it's a pressure game you need to understand how good you are when it comes to the entire syllabus area those 3 hours 15 minutes are very special and they are very different from your overall preparation so even let's imagine there are two students let's say ahmed and let's say bilal now ahmed is 90% prepared let's call bilal is 70% prepared ahmed did not attempted any mock exam but bilal attempted three mock exams those were not that great his preparation is 70% i was very much prepared my preparation is 90% now you know what when it comes to final exam even though i am well prepared i will not be able to manage the pressure the environment it's an art it's a habit to sit for 3 hours 15 minutes in a stretch you will get tired your you know your body will get fatigued your brain will start you know your prog your processing will get slower around last in the last 1 hour you will be exhausted but if you are going to commit that plan if you are going to execute that plan for 3 for three times at least just like bilal you will survive that 3 hour 15 minute period on 4 september 2023 and you will kill the paper so exam preparation the past papers the instructions of the tutor those things would become irrelevant on those 3 hour 15 minutes the ball will be in your court you will be the guardian of the angel you will be the warrior and you will be the avenger but you need to practice that story right so there is a huge chunk of students who are going to be well prepared but because they will not attempt the mock exams they will end up failing the paper just because they will not be able to handle the pressure a 5 to 10 mark part within the final exam will put them off and they will be you know they their their brain will be all over the place they will be done and dusted for the day gone for all money just because they will panic and they will not be able to handle the pressure their body will not be able to survive the you know that sustainable period of 3 hour 15 minutes so you should not do that promise yourself right now right here promise please 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 make a promise reason number second last we are end, we are heading towards the end just focus second last reason why triple a has got such a high failure rate now this needs a little attention okay i don't want you to 
focus on your SBR. I don't want that. I don't want you to focus on your FR. But at the same time, I'm telling you that if you want to fail the paper, do not prepare your IAS and IFRS. Do not prepare IAS, IFRS, the accounting standards, and you will fail the paper. But at the same time, I'm saying don't focus on your SBR book, notes, or kit. Don't focus on FR book or kit. Forget about ISAs. For, forget about ISAs. Hi, hello, Sir Rizwan. How are you? Hello. I'm good. I'm good. How's the session, is going? session is going perfectly all right. Please order some food. Okay. I shall hold on to your th thought. I want us to prepare. I want all of us to prepare IAS and IFRS but focusing on AAA only. How can we do that? There is a technique where you will create your own IFRS and IAS notes. I'm talking about accounting standards. I'm not bothered about auditing standards. So we need to prepare the accounting standard notes in the context of AAA and we are not going to use FR book or SBR book, FR notes or SBR notes. Rather, we are going to create notes from the past papers of AAA, from the exam kit of AAA. This is a technique through which we will create our own accounting standard notes and it will take you know, it's a slowly but slow but a, but a sure shot process. So we are not going to get the ready-made notes. Okay, is there anyone who wants fantastic IAS and IFRS notes from my side? Is there anyone who wants that? I've got brilliant notes available. I can send you right now within, uh, within one minute. I can send you Aisha right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm not going to send them. I'm not going to send them because I will guide you and I will teach you how to prepare those notes. If I'm going to send those notes. <laughs> yeah, Mariam, wonderful. If I'm going to send you those notes. There is 50% chance that you will make the best use of it and you will ace the paper. But if you are going to create notes for yourself with my instructions slowly but surely every day seven eight ten lines will be added in it it's a slow process it will take approximately you know well let's call it 1.5 months after 1.5 months you will have your own IAS and IFRS notes and those brilliant notes would be you know something really special not only for you but for your final exam and guess what out of 80 technical marks, out of 80 technical marks, minimum 15, well, I would say 10 to 15 marks, 10 to 15 marks are relevant to your IFRS. Is it important to prepare IFRS and IS? Yes or no? 10 to 15 marks out of 80 marks. Absolutely gold. Are we going to get the ready-made notes? No. Well, if somebody is going to contact me one week before the exam or 10 days before the exam, and if he's going, even if I don't know him or her, and if he's going to message me, uh, hello, am I talking to Ahmed? I will say, yes. How are you? Okay. Uh, can I have IFRS and IS notes? Trust me, I will send them within a minute without any second thought. Those who know me, you know me. I will send them anyway. I will send them anyway, considering 10 days are left in the final exam. But you, 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 your ears have, you know, you know the story, how to create notes for yourself. So if somebody is going to say, sir, I did not prepare anything. I did not follow any instructions. I did nothing. You know, I'm, I'm, just forget me and forgive me and then send me the notes. I will send the notes 10 or 15 days before the exam. But I'm telling you, this is not the correct way. The correct, it is so convenient for me. I shall just imagine it is so convenient for me to say, I have got those epic notes 
which will make sure that you will be you know right next to mr tony stark and you will be part of the avengers and you will ace the triple a exam i can say that but what i'm saying is don't rely on the ifrs notes create one for yourself that has to be a special file you will realize how to create notes when you will attend the lectures last but surely not the least make sure your at least one mock exam is marked by any expert tutor if it is not me any other expert tutor make sure that tutor personally marks your exam so that is a mandatory thing the full paper needs to be marked by your triple a uh, tutor ideally speaking who uh, the 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 tutor who taught you has to you know mark your mock exam that's very important because once your mock exam will be marked there is a huge possibility you will jump from 48 to 58 you might jump from maybe 52 to 64 you will jump you will have a jump of 10 to 15 mark there is a possibility some of you might confirm that that you you enjoyed that jump when you attempted double a with me you will enjoy a jump from your final mock exam to your final exam you will experience a jump so because the final mock exam always you know the feedback always gives you something to you know look up to and you can bounce back so is there anyone who has got any query or any question please raise your question now because these are the things which we need to make sure Aisha, did you attempt a double A mock exam? Okay, there is a question. Okay, so, how much you scored in the double A mock exam, Aisha? In the mock exam, not in the final exam. I, I, I don't know if I'm correct or not, but you scored seventy-seven in your final exam, right? in the 77 in your final exam but what about the mock exam okay there is a question from i had exemption in double a from ca so i have not attempted double a i'm skeptical if i should go for triple a or not any advice for me sir double you know what you know what if you want if is if there is anyone out there who wants to ace triple a you have to make sure you don't rely on your double a so i think core i i i think i've i've answered your question as well if there is anyone who's going to rely on double a for triple a that's a recipe for failure so if you did not study double a good for you good for you you have to fall is there anything which has got to do with double a why students fail in triple a is there anything which has got to do with double a nothing at all so if you are unfamiliar with your double a good for you Okay, Gautam has got a question. So, do we have to memorize ISA also? Not at all. Not at all. Triple A is all about application. So, if I'm going to teach, what are the you know guidance of the ISA 220 quality management? The examiner will not ask you write down an essay on ISA 220 quality management. Rather, examiner will give you a real life situation where the audit manager, the audit trainee would have made compromises on the audit plan. they would have deviated the audit plan out of nowhere they they there is a possibility the audit trainee submitted the work to the audit manager and the audit manager did not perform any review whatsoever they were not skeptic enough so there is the triple a exam is all about application so you don't have to memorize auditing standards not at all okay mohammed ahmed is saying no sir no questions about the session so he is absolutely crystal clear Gautam is saying, "Okay, done. Thank you." Uh, is there any difference between the UK and the international variant? Well, ninety-five or maybe more than ninety-five percent stuff is same. Hardly there are couple of pages for exclusively for the UK variant student. In the exam kit, there are two or three extra questions for the UK variant student. Otherwise, it's the same. Nothing to worry about. Any other question from anyone before I take on your leave? so this is the number this is my number in case you have got any query whatsoever let me give you
So if you want to contact Wifi, here is the number plus nine two three two four nine triple two. Sorry, not not nine triple two nine triple two. <laughs> okay, uh, one three eight seven. So this is the number in case you want to enroll in any subject whatsoever for the June 20, uh, September 2023. And this is my number in case you want to contact me. Okay, kindly add me to, add me to the WhatsApp group and where can I can get further information? Well, there is a free WhatsApp group. Which it's called Wifi's AAA Global Group for the, for the September 2023. Uh, you need to contact me and I will share the link of that particular uh, WhatsApp group. Asif Khan, will you cover that UK version area separately for those students? Uh, yes, we will cover and we always do that. There is nothing extraordinary about it, but we do cover that. That's the normal practice because from UK, the students tend to go for the UK variant. But apart from that, majority students will go for the international variant. Don't worry about it. Any other question from anyone? Yeah, most welcome. Okay, it's time to, for me to take your leave. Thank you very much. I hope it was a, a, you know, energetic session. Thank you for your cooperation and your participation. So this paper is geared towards IFRS and IES, not ISAs. Absolutely gold, Aisha. Why is that? Because auditing standards, the application of auditing standard is what AAA is all about. So you don't have to road learn anything from the, from the auditing standard. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Thank you very much, everyone. Most welcome. Stay blessed. Uh, and don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much. See you soon.